It's time for another tale from the glass guarded world with Ashley as Terra Dane, the human fighter, Josh as Zartok, the tiefling wizard, and Gaston, the rogue and bard, Jessica as Coral Petricor, the Genasi druid, and Mama Sass, the half orc bard and barbarian, and Chris as Aster Fortuna, the rascally rogue and bard extraordinaire. We also have a mysterious guest player. He appears in the virtual tabletop software as definitely not Matt Mercer. And he has turned off his camera in the Zoom, so not even the players know who he is at first. The heroes have arrived in the city of Fifeness late at night with the goal of smuggling Righty the Gnome's family out of the city. Fifeness is a city mostly inhabited by gnomes and under the oppressive thumb of the god king and his priests. So far, the adventurers have managed to sneak into the city undetected, only to find that the streets are deserted, aside from the watchful priests of the god king. Even though some of the adventurers are invisible, or extremely stealthy, or have shapeshifted into an owl, a priest has just turned a corner to face the party. Probably as a result of hearing Terra's armor. She is kind of loud. Now they must decide what to do about this priest of the God King who is about to sound the alarm. So when we left off, you had recently rounded a corner and stumbled into a gnome wearing white robes who didn't have a torch, but he actually heard you walking around. You kind of bumped into him and he stumbled backward and started calling out. And I think Chris said he wanted to cast a spell. Yes. But what we're going to do even though this might not be combat, is we're going to roll for initiative. We're going to start with initiative here and let everybody act in initiative order. Let's go ahead and roll. Everybody go ahead and roll, including our mysterious guest player. Mysterious. Oh, okay. That's not good for you. Mm. Mm -mm. Definitely not Matt Mercer. Got a 10. Got a 10. Mm. All right. <laughs> Good to know. I was about to ask you to type that. You were way ahead of me. Tara, what did you get? 18. 18. Aster, what did you get? 19. 19. Zartok, what did you get? 20. 20. What's your dexterity bonus? One. All right. Oh, no, that gnome is good. Yeah, it is. Coral, what did you get? 13. We're going to start off with Zartok. This gnome has stepped in front of the group and bumped into Terra. Terra and the gnome have bumped into each other. You're all invisible. And the gnome is calling out, asking if there's someone there. And they look like they're about to do other stuff, but you don't know what yet because it's not their turn. What do you want to do? Zartok's walking. Walking. He's headed to the docks. I don't know. Nothing's changed to him. Okay. Uh, I don't know which way the docks are. I'll just call it this way. You know they're north. That's about 30 feet. Okay. Zartok walks. Bye. Now this gnome priest acts. And the priest casts a spell. <laughs> With disadvantage? Oh. oh, never mind, never mind. All right, so let me check the area of effect here. All right, so the priest casts a spell, and the area is 20 feet. Can you see that on the map? Yes. 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 All right. He casts fairy fire. <laughs> no. I'm in the I'm you're in, in the, the air. air. Yeah, you're a, you're an owl flying around. So, so I don't know how affected. vertical works. It's 20 feet. I'm going to assume you're probably flying higher than 20 feet since the buildings are at least that tall, most of them. Yes, so that I'm going to assume that, that, that coral is not affected. 
Aster and Terra make dexterity saving throws. What, what's the save, DC? Let me check my port and rolls too. Hold on, nobody's nobody say. Okay. Oh man, they're not very. Good. One's good. Okay, tell me what your rolls are before uh, Mike tells us the. Uh, I would be a ten. Mm, what'd you get, Chris? Nineteen. Nineteen. Ooh. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Zartok, I need to know, do you want to use one of your portent rolls? Right. I don't know that... Ashley, what is um, Terra's uh, dex modifier anyway? What's the... One. Okay. I think... So I, my high... So I've got a 14 and a 4. If I gave you a 14, you'd, you'd have a 15. You're probably going to save. Pro- it just depends on how awesome this priest is. I guess. I guess let's use it. Let's give uh, Tara the 14 on this to avoid being uninvisible. No, that's your saving throw modifier. And so she'll she'll get a 15. Yeah, what's your deck saving modifiers at one, Ashley? I assume. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have a efficiency. Okay. All right, let's just give her a 15 and see if it works or not. Okay, so you're going to give her the roll? Yep. Okay. Aster, you saved. Oh, bummer. All right. Good effort. Tara, you would not have saved except for with that, uh, with with Zartok giving you that uh, portent roll, you actually have saved, only barely, but you did manage to dive out of the way of this spell. He cast this spell and Tara manages to dive out of the way and so does Aster. Coral is not affected by it. She's out of the area of effect. Zartok has already moved off to the side. And so he doesn't see anything. But he does hear the sounds of people diving out of the way in heavy armor. That's fair. Trying to avoid this spell. So he backs up. And he calls out for help. Help! Help! There's people here uh, violating curfew. Brother Dimpledar? Brother Dimpledar, come quickly! (laughs) <laughs> and that's the gnome's turn I like that Dave he's going to take a step back away from Terra Aster what do you want to do okay are we even are we even gonna because I feel like so he does know we're there he just doesn't know where we're coming he knows someone is there uh, you're still invisible yep just walk away the problem is that Terra is very much not stealthy how dare you She's 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 not rolling at disadvantage right now. No, she's still got my uh, enhance ability on no, her. But I think I really did roll like a one last time, so I'm really not. No, stealthy. I'm pretty sure you did. I think that's what got us to this. Yeah, sorry. So I'm going to say that I'm going to uh, message Tara, who's near me, right? Because she can only hear me when I use message. I think if you cast right. a spell, you're coming out of invisibility. Uh, you're right. It doesn't even no, matter I wasn't what. Gonna say say anything, Josh. That was nice of you. <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna walk towards uh, Zartok and see if maybe Tara can do the same. Alright, you don't actually know where Zartok is, but I'll assume you're just walking in that direction. Oh, you're right. You're right. That's my turn because I'm not gonna cast anything once I've seen that gnome against that wall. That means it's now Tara's turn. Tara, what do you want to do? Okay, so I don't know where anyone is except for maybe the owl, if I look up. Right. Uh, and this gnome. Uh, Tara is going to uh, also walk, but she's walking in the other direction, so uh, this <laughs> way. <laughs> 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 okay, so Zartok and Aster have gone west, and Tara has gone east around different sides of a building in front of them. Well, not around the building, but there is a building in front of them, so they're moving in the opposite directions in front of it. She's looking up like she expects Coral to, uh, I don't know, see invisible or something. Okay. Now, are you trying to be stealthy at all, Tara? Yes. Okay. I'm going to have you roll a stealth check. That would be an eight. You have not beat the (laughs) priest's passive perception. (laughs) So the priest's head snaps in your direction. He's like, I hear you. You're trying to be sneaky. (laughs) And that brings us to Coral. Coral, what do you want to do? I'm going to uh, fly up and land on the edge of this building. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of scrape my claws against the uh, building to um, 
create like some noise. Uh huh. I'm going to loudly screech and dive bomb the ground like I'm picking up a mouse. Okay. So you're going to try to trick him. Yep, and I'm just going to fly off then in this direction. All right, I'm going to have you make a deception check. He is very skeptical because he actually bumped into someone. But we'll (laughs) see. We'll see if maybe he persuades himself. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Make a deception check. You know, it's fun. Both mine and the owl's charisma is the same. Oh, well, that's convenient. Oh, that's a nine because it's 11 minus two. (laughs) Yikes. Okay, so he has just barely beaten your deception check. Uh, so he looks confused. He's looking around <laughs> confused, not quite sure what's going on. It's not that he thinks that the owl was making all the noise. It's just he doesn't understand why there's an owl flying around <laughs> and what it has to do with everything else that's happening. Sure. So he is still confused. Now it's time for our guest player And I will go ahead and make your icon visible to you there so you know exactly where you are. So uh, our guest player for today, returning to the podcast, is Ben Carter. Ben, turn on your camera. Hi, everybody. There he is. (laughs) Yay. Hey, not definitely not Matt Mercer. definitely not Matt Mercer. Absolutely (laughs) not Matt Mercer. (laughs) I'm bold. Lower your expectations already. (laughs) It's better than Matt Mercer. It's Ben Carter. There you go. That's what I always say, for sure. (laughs) Hello, I'm Ben Carter. I'm better than Matt Mercer. Absolutely. What an introduction. I like that intro. Hey, everybody. Ben, your character is standing there looking around the corner of this building. You've heard some commotion. Yes. You can see there's a gnome backed up against a wall. He doesn't seem to have spotted you. He's looking at an owl that has just flown by. (laughs) And you heard some heavy footsteps go off to the east. And you think maybe, because you're a pretty perceptive fellow, I think you think maybe you heard some footsteps going off to the west. But you don't see anyone except for this priest who looks alarmed and is calling for help. Um, Did I see the owl doing the dive bombing and screeching and that kind of thing? Yes. Okay. So you're not sure what's going on here. And I should also mention Zartok and Aster, you can see another gnome to your northwest up against a building with a torch and he's looking in the direction of all this commotion with a look of um, interest and concern on his face. How tall is the building I'm standing against? Uh, Let's say that's a two-story building but these are gnome stories so uh, (laughs) let's say it's uh, 15, 16 feet tall. Okay, and does it look climbable? It's... Sure, yes. It's got stone walls. Okay, so I think what I would like to do is... I also have no idea really what's going on. So I kind of want to try and get a vantage point. So I want to climb up on top of the building I'm against and see... All right, you have a climb speed, I I think? I do, yeah. What's your climb speed? Uh, I think it's just my normal speed, so just 30. All right, well, you climb up onto the building. Ignore the interior of the building. Don't worry Mm -hmm. about it. Uh, So you climb up onto the building... And now you're, I guess you can look over to the other side. And I'm actually going to place you outside the building because otherwise the the walls will block your view. Okay. But let's assume that you are actually on top of the building. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I can see some things. Now I can actually. (laughs) Yes. Okay. This is good. Now you can see what's going on. What do you want to do now? Well, actually, you can't, (laughs) you still can't see much, right? You can't see any of these tokens that are visible on the map. They're all invisible except for the owl. And you can see this priest backed up against the doors of a house to the north. And you can see there's another priest off to the west who looks like he's going to head in this direction when he gets a chance. And what's the gap between the buildings? Is that 15 feet-ish? 15 feet. Hmm. The owl I saw flew off towards the east, is is that right? Correct. Yeah, okay. And you also heard a door open to your west somewhere. Okay, and these streets are dark, right? Like the, the gnome doesn't have a light. That's right. The only light is coming from torches carried by these gnomes. Although the gnome that's directly in front of the party, the gnome that's backed up against this building, directly in front of everyone, this gnome has no torch. And you know that these gnomes have dark vision. Right. Um, yeah, I kind of want to follow the owl. Okay. Because um, that's the interesting thing that I can see. How do you want to do that? 
Yeah, jumping, I'm not that great at jumping. Is jump, jumping is, is it strength or acrobatics? Let's look that up. I think it's athletics. Athletics. Yeah. My athletics is not good. Jumping. Your strength determines how far you can jump. Uh, you can jump a number of feet up to your strength score if you move at least 10 feet on foot immediately before the jump. If you make a standing long jump, you can only leap half that distance. Okay. I think I'm going to miss the step across the gap. Oh, cool. All right, so you're going to jump to the building across the way? Yeah, exactly. Or jump which building? To the east or north? Uh, I was going to go to the north, I think, and then okay. head. Misty Step would actually take you all the way to the east if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll head east. That's fine. Okay. I'm, again, I want to put you outside the building yeah. so that you can see everything on the map. If I put you inside, you won't be able to see through the walls. Okay. And I'm just going to observe. I want to remain hidden so I can... Happy to roll for stealth again still yep, if you make want. make a stealth check. Okay. 25. All right. So as far as you can tell, no one has spotted you. I tried. I only got a 22. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Nice. So, Coral, you do not see this figure, cloaked figure, running along the rooftops. Okay. And that takes us back to Zartok. Zartok, you can hear this owl hooting over to your east, and you can see this gnome to your northwest that's about to come in your direction. All right, got a 20 stealth moving up this way. All right, Zartok moves northward. Okay, to the edge of our map. Bye, guest player. <laughs> <laughs> Zartok's out. So he's going to move 30 feet. Actually, he's going to double move. This gnome comes running toward Aster. Of course, he doesn't know Aster's there, but running in the direction of the gnome that's calling for help. That's his turn. The other gnome is, let's see, what else can this other gnome do? He can't target you with a spell. Can he do something else? Ooh, that's a good one. Let's do that. That's even better. Concerning. Rut row. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he has to be able to see you. Well, actually, it doesn't say that. Choose one creature, object, or magical effect within range. Dispel magic. But to target a creature, don't you have to see... Automatically in the effects of a spell on the target. It doesn't say that you have to be able to see them. I was going to say, you do need line of sight, don't you, to be able to... Let's see. Thing. I don't see anything about... Normally it says one effect that you can see or one creature you can see. It doesn't say that. I think you just have to know that the effect is there. Like, you don't have to... Like, you could know somebody's invisible and then ca just cast... I assume this is a spell. Yeah. Uh, cast a spell. But, like... Because if you know they're there, you're okay, even if you can't see them, I think. Wow, this is a tough call. Jeez, they, they just need to add in three words to make this easy. Yeah, I'm looking at the what the debate about it online says. Give me a moment to read this. I'm going I'm to read this thoroughly and see what the ruling seems to be. Sure. Thinking you can. Let's just read forum threads. <laughs> yeah. Their new podcast, PimpDM34, says... <laughs> Dispel magic sucks. <laughs> it's a new one for us. We haven't done invisible yet. I haven't done that multiple times. Earlier editions solve this by having it where you choose a creature or an area of effect. Whereas right. this current version, it's like, eh. Eh, whatevs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it makes it seem like you can just like, you're like, oh, I know there's a magical effect in the area. And then bam, like once to let the players win. <laughs> the DM is on the side of the players, right? That's the way it works. Oh, yeah, always. There doesn't seem to be any sage advice on the subject. <laughs> oh, wait. Sage advice. <laughs> Everything's fine here. <laughs> sage advice 37. Oh. That is a heck of a background change. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Actually, really change your background to the Everything's Fine Fire Dog comic. <laughs> some coffee now. Well, this is extremely unhelpful. <laughs> uh, Mike Morals says Invisible does not equal hidden. Can target if invisible but not hidden, but not if the invisible creature is hidden. But <laughs> wouldn't invisible creatures be hidden because they're invisible? No, you, you have to take your hide action. To be yeah, hidden. you have to take the hide action. Oh. And, and we're, we're just running around. We're not trying to hide. Okay, so here's what I'm going to say then. 
The one whose position he's pretty sure about is Terra. So he's going to cast Dispel Magic on Terra and turn her visible. So Terra becomes visible. Quick, make sure there's no save. Um, there's not because it's a second level spell versus a third level spell. Well, I think he cast it at a third level, but still third versus third. No, Ooh. what level did you cast it at, Oh, what level at, did you cast that spell at? Oh, uh, third. Oh, no, no, that was me. Third. Aster oh, cast Aster, it. sorry. I, I cast oh, it yes, at, at, Aster did one, and... I cast it so at, I at, to... at third level, because I was, I got terrible. Getting two people. It, it just, I think it just cancels third level, too. It does. Yeah, it doesn't matter. 3v3. Okay, well, in that case, yes, the spell goes down. Terra turns visible. I'm so sorry. Now, I, we could have an additional argument about whether it cancels the spell entirely, which would turn Aster visible as well. Yes, that's <laughs> what I was going to ask right now. But I... <laughs> But I'm not going to go that far. Uh, I don't. I, I think it just is going to affect the one person that it targets, and not everyone under that spell. I'm not sure about that. I'm not entirely confident about that. But I'm going to go with that for now. Sounds I like mean, a that, good ruling. That, that makes sense because like Tara can do an action and drop hers, but it doesn't right. affect Astros Asters, and vice versa. Right. I think that makes sense. Okay. Tara becomes visible, and the gnome sort of jumps back and says. You, you there, stop, and moves. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, moves up to Terra. Aster, now it's your turn. You can see that Terra has become visible. The priest has run up to her, uh, wielding, what is he wielding? Mace. He's got a mace in one hand. What do you want to do? Why are they so far away from each other? I can't do Okay, so what am I... <laughs> I, it's so hard with these gnomes because of the way they talk. I don't see them as enemies. <laughs> um, so I guess I'm going to go try to knock this one out. Or maybe. <laughs> how's my grappling? Does grappling use strength? Is grappling a strength thing? Grappling uses athletics. Um, I'm going to bonk you, man. All right. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to bonk you, friend. I'm trying to non-lethal knock this thing out. Okay. All right, my first one doesn't hit. Okay. My second one does. So if my first one missed, that means my... What was your... Ro Tell me what your totals were. So my first one was a 14. Yeah, that's a miss. You're right. Um, and the other one was 16 plus 8. Yep, that's a hit. Yep. I targeted the first dice as being my first attempt, and I missed. So does that remove my invisibility so then I don't get yes. sneak attack on this guy? Uh, that's correct. Okay, and I'll use a defensive flourish again. Nice. So 15 damage. Oh, wow. On, All right. On that attack, and then I get a plus five to my... So I'm at 21 AC. Okay. Then I'll swing with my whip. And I swing and I miss. <laughs> with a four. This whip with sharp bone shards in it, slashes past the priest, he dodges out of the way, and shouts an alarm as this half-drow appears next to him, and he says, oh my god, it's a drow invasion? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I forget drows are evil here. That's my turn. <laughs> Tara, what do you want to do? Um, I will grapple this guy. 16. 16. He has to beat that. He does not. You have grappled him. Okay, I'm going to try and cover his mouth, and I'm going to go, shh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You cover the gnome's mouth and say, shh. Coral, what do you want to do? The whole heck is broken loose <laughs> all around you. I assume I heard Aster and this guy call out. So right. I'm going to fly over here. Coral, as an owl, flies to the west toward Aster and this other gnome priest. I kind of situate myself halfway between the two groups, and I turn back into Coral, uh, and I'm going to cast Hold Person at a third level. Uh, both of the priests need to do a DC 16 wisdom save. I have that. All Why right. did I use that? You're so smart, Coral. DC 16 wisdom save. We'll see if it works. Saved. And a natural 20. Yep. Yeah. Okay. They both saved. 17 and 26. Wow. That's my turn. Hmm. 
That is Coral's turn. A good idea, but it's hard to make priests fail wisdom saving throws. Yep. And that means it is now the stranger's turn for Ben's character, who is as yet unnamed. The shadowy figure lurking on the rooftop, looking down on this chaos unfolding below, you see that there is a woman in full plate armor. In fact, I would go so far as to call it extravagant gaudy. Maybe not gaudy. She thinks it's tasteful. <laughs> no. Uh, extravagant and tasteful full plate armor covered in Wait, jewels. I wasn't wearing that because we were being sneaky. Oh, you're not? You're wearing the chain? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. She's wearing some chain armor then. And she is engaged in combat with a gnome priest of the God King. She looks pretty capable. She looks like she can take care of herself. And the owl that was flying around has just turned into a young woman with gray skin and fiery hair that's whipping around as she casts a spell on the two priests, but they seem to shrug it off. And then you can see there is a an elf or a half-elf that's fighting this priest to the west. And then that's it. I guess you can't see the fourth person. You don't even know they're there. This is the first time you've seen anyone stand up to these priests. Yeah, this is... Uh quite the eventful evening. <laughs> Having been here for a couple of days already and not really liking these priests either and seeing what the group is doing, I feel there's probably only one good way to resolve it. So I'm going to try and sneak attack the gnome that Ashley is grappling. All right, so Terra is fighting a gnome. Uh, it's, she's grappling it and trying to cover its mouth. You're going to sneak attack it. What are you attacking with? Uh, I want to do non-lethal damage. I just want to knock them out. So I, th okay. I think I have to get up close, right? Like I can't... Yeah, I, can't I don't think you can do that bow. with a crossbow yeah. or anything. Um, or short bow, whatever. Ben, are you sure you don't have like a boxing glove arrow? Boxing glove. I, I don't have a boxing, boxing glove. glove arrow. It's the boxing glove arrow you can shoot. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to leap down from the the building and just try and... Uh, it's a rapier that I've got. Tara, I guess this figure that was lurking on the rooftop that you didn't know was there rushes up next to this priest. Is that right, Ben? Yeah. All right, so rushes up next to this priest, and the figure looks... Cool. So someone describe Ben's character for us. He's a kitty. It's a tabaxi. <laughs> yeah. So the only difference from this image that you'll see when I actually appear is that I'm currently uh, don't have white fur. I have orange fur. Ooh. Oh, you're not the, a white furred tabaxi. Uh, so, yes, there's a story there. Okay. Oh. In the picture I'm showing you, he has white fur, but you see an orange furred cat-like humanoid with a bizarre looking sword. And it's glowing and the colors of the glowing uh, sword are changing. Ooh. He's wearing a, a cloak and some distinguished looking uh, clothing. Anything else anybody wants to describe here to help the listener? I don't know if Aster can see him at this point because my back is probably turned. But if I could see him, Aster would like the fanciness quite a bit. <laughs> Level of fanciness. It's not showy though. It's very tasteful. Yeah, it's very tasteful. He looks cool. The rapier hilt looks... Um... Wicked. Yeah, That's so the word. rapier hilt looks almost like the head of some kind of demon, like the skull of some kind of demon, and the eyes are glowing gems, and those colors in the glowing gems are alternating. They're not just blue and red, as you can see in the picture. They're changing colors in a sort of chaotic, unpredictable manner. It's a it's a weird-looking weapon. Did you draw this? Man? This is an original piece by Sean. Man, Sean, as you, can you see, are good. Yeah, there you go. See the signature in Sean is really good. Yet another brilliant piece by Sean. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I had uh, Sean do some art for my D&D group as well, and he did an awesome job I would highly recommend. You can see some of Sean's work at seanmakes.com. That's S-H-A-U-N, makes. Must be nice to be talented. Right. Yeah, Although cool. he, he, would see, he would say he works, he works at it, too. He's I the mean, first one to... We all know he's lying. He doesn't work at it at all. <laughs> ah, busted. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, he does work pretty hard at it. He's had a lot of practice, and he's upgraded his equipment. He can do some pretty cool stuff now. Not that his other older stuff wasn't also cool. It's just that now he can do even more cool stuff. 
that's what this figure looks like that runs up next to Terra. So you're going to attack this gnome with some non-lethal attacks, right? Yes. And I'm hoping you'll allow sneak attack. Uh, you, you can do sneak attack because you have an ally adjacent to your target. Fantastic. Uh, let's do that then. Uh, that is... Oh, no. A one? Uh, okay, I rolled a natural one. Oh, boy. Which, um, Welcome to the show, Ben. Mike this loves is kind this. of a bad uh, intro for it, us, huh? It, it's a bad intro. I'm hoping... I'm hoping he hits Terra. Well, <laughs> well this, the bad thing about this is that this weapon also has some properties that oh, happen it does. when a one is rolled. It does. What happens with this weapon if you roll a fumble? Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> okay, so as has been described, this weapon is it's a rapier. It's got this kind of skull with these glowing eyes on it. Um, I swing at the gnome and you see the eyes are flashing, alternating, and suddenly I they turn just red. And when that happens, I am struck with the confusion spell for one round. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the weapon mechanic. And I must roll a d10 to determine the behavior. Oh right off the bat. Oh. What a, I'm glad it happened though. What an intro. <laughs> awesome. Oh, this is this sucks. Okay, so I'm gonna roll the D ten. There's some cool things that happen. Um I rolled a five, which means basically I've lost all my actions and movement. So I'm kind of paralyzed. So, here's what everyone sees happens. <laughs> this cat creature nimbly hops off the roof, runs up to attack this gnome but trips over his tail and stumbles forward. And then suddenly his sword lights up with a red light and he just stands there looking dazed. Just he doesn't understand what's going on. This look of confusion on, on his comes across his face and he just stands there doing nothing. Now you get to make a wisdom saving throw at the end of your turn. I do. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Ah, joy. <laughs> deep sigh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very deep sigh. Uh, wisdom saving throw. That is a five, but don't say anything. Um, <laughs> I might want to feel very lucky, and I'm going to try that again, I think. <laughs> All right. To get a four. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right, wonderful. So you do not save this round. That's what happens with this character. That takes us back to Zartok. Zartok, you can hear that something has broken out combat-wise behind you. You can see that Aster is now engaged in combat with this priest behind you. What do you want to do? You're still invisible. Yeah, he, he is. Zartok leaves us all. <laughs> I mean, you could just leave. I and finish the whole mission by yourself I mean, and he, let them... No? He rolls his eyes and walks back over there. <laughs> <laughs> and sees it's just stuff happening. And what? There's something... There's Zartok would, would have just left. What is he going to do, though? Nobody's, nobody's trying to lie yet. Okay, that's not Zartok's specialty. But he'll say... Uh, Stop it! You're interfering with the the watchers of the Watchmen. Okay. And he rolled a six on a blow on a, a deception <laughs> check. <laughs> yes. All right. Let's see. The two gnomes look at each other and shrug. <laughs> can can invisibility still be on him because he? Yeah. Didn't yeah. Attack? He hasn't cast any spells or attacked okay, or anything. Perfect. It's just a voice comes out of nowhere. And that's all Zartok tries to do. Okay, and now the priests get to go. The priest in front of Aster is going to cast a spell. And I need Aster and Coral to make wisdom saving throws. 25. Oh, you made it. Ooh, 17 plus two. You also made it. Did that spell seem familiar to me? Yeah. Yeah, they just cast the exact same spell you tried to cast. Yep, okay. Uh, so that was an attempted hold person. And the other priest. So the other priest, it's going to be difficult because they're trying to cast a spell as well while being grappled. 
while Terra is trying to cover his mouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an opposed check here, not to escape the grapple because he can't fully escape the grapple unless he spends his whole turn on it. I'm just going to do a roll to see if he's able to cast a spell at all. So uh, he's going to make an opposed uh, athletics check to yours, Terra. So make an athletics check. Oh, he did not roll great. 21. 21. All right. So he is not able to get that spell off. He's trying to cast a spell, but he can't manage it. So he's just sort of stuck there, unable to get this spell off while you're silencing him with your hand. So since he can't even manage to talk, is there anything else he can do? No, I'll just say that's basically his round. He's he's not able to um, to do anything else unless there's anything else he can do. Let's see. Does he have any spells? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. Actually, I should check that. I should check first to make sure that hold person has a verbal component. I believe it does. I should probably check that. It does. It does, yeah. So he can't cast that spell. Nothing else that he can really do. Okay, so that's his turn. Aster, what do you want to do? I was about to cast darkness on everybody, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is... Should I keep bonking him? How does he look? How does he look, Mike? Did my 115 do some... Does he look dazed? And- He's not about to go down, if that's what you mean, but you did deal him a pretty rough blow. I'm going to bonus. He can't take a lot more of that. I'll put it that way. And he tried to hold person us, right? So it's not like he's trying to, like, cut us to death. Right. <sighs> he does have a mace in his hand. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to burn it. All right, I'll do it. I'll cast hold person. Let's see if I can reach. Does my 60 feet reach the other one, too? Let's see. No. Nope. Too far away. Darn it. Yeah, I'm just going to keep bonking him. Okay. All right. Never mind then. All right. So Aster continues trying to pummel this gnome. Go to sleep. (laughs) 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 I missed the three. Okay. That that probably misses unless you have a plus double digits to hit. (laughs) No, I'm going to try again. A natural one. Oh no, roll percentile. <laughs> oh Having a great day. I feel like I jinxed the group or something. No, this is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is normal. <laughs> so 12? So you are trying to hit this gnome, but you're just not used to fighting creatures so small. And you swing through and manage to hit yourself on the backswing. No. And you take one point of damage. Okay. So you sort of cut yourself, you nick yourself with your sword. Well, so that doesn't end my turn, though, right? I can still do my bonus? You can keep going. (sighs) Try my whip. Does a 16 hit? A 16 just hits. Oh, my God! Finally! God, my rolls have been terrible. All right. Okay, that's a... That is going to be... Six damage. Six damage. Damage to this little gnome. Yeah, because I didn't use right. a, a, a bardic inspiration. Okay, so you again punch this gnome with the hilt of your sword, and he stumbles back a little bit. Now, wait, but now, na- stop! Uh, <laughs> stop! Uh, I'm gonna move because he can't attack me because I actually attempted it to attack. So using your mobility feet. Yeah, and Zartak's invisible, so I don't have to worry too much, correct? Right. All right, so Aster runs off to the east, away from this gnome that he has punched twice, trying to help Terra. And that's the end of Aster's turn. Terra, what do you want to do? You've got this gnome grappled, and this other creature, this other cat-like humanoid has appeared next to you, and is just kind of standing there looking dazed. Yeah, because Ben's character, uh, the mysterious cat-like character, he came down to attack, but he didn't attack anybody directly. Right. It was no. He he, tr- he started to, but sort of tripped over his tail, and his sword lit up, and now he's just standing there looking dazed. Yeah. So it's safe to assume that Aster thinks that Terra is being ambushed by multiple opponents. You're not really sure of, uh, what's up with this guy. Okay. I mean, he's okay. he's just not, standing. He doesn't there? look very threatening at the moment. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Gee, thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's babe. very confusing. <laughs> It's such a confusing battle. Tara looks deeply confused. You know, she kind of like jumped down and I don't know if she could tell what he was trying to attack because he did kind of just stumble and now he looks just confused and she's very confused, but in a natural sense instead of a magical sense. Um, 
she so she just looks down to see where everyone else is and I guess she sees Aster running over here and Coral not a bird anymore and um yeah she's just gonna continue grappling this guy and um I, I mean she can't like attack or anything she's holding him it'd be kind of weird to just non-lethally stab him with a sword I guess I have a dagger technically you'd have to put your sword away and get out the dagger oh the sword would be the dagger Oh, you could change it into a dagger. That's true. Nice. <laughs> you could do that. What a cool weapon. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, pull out my hilt, and it's going to be a dagger, and I'm going to hold it up to the gnome, and I'm going to go, shh. <laughs> 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 and then, you know, if he, like, tries to move, I will hold an action to attack. All right, so you're readying an action yeah. to attack if this gnome tries to move. Hmm. Your ready to action is, if he tries to move away, then you will attack him with this dagger. Yep. Lethally or non-lethally? Uh, non-lethally? It's hard to do a non-lethal attack with a dagger, but I guess you could try. I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I'm going to kill him with a dagger, so I, irrelevant. Okay, and then we're back to the mysterious cat person. Uh, you need to roll a d10 again to figure out what happens with confusion this round. I do. Um... There's nothing in there that says I can't talk. Is that correct? I guess it kind of depends on what you roll for the round. Like, if you don't move or take actions this turn, if we roll a two to a six, I would actually rule that you don't say anything either. You just kind of stand there. Okay. But if you rolled one of your other numbers, then I could, I'd could, i say maybe you could say something. Okay. So let's roll and see what you get. Let's see what we get. Uh, I got an eight, which is eight. not good. All right, you make a melee attack against a randomly determined creature within your reach. So that's either going to be Terra or this gnome. I'm going to roll a d4, and one to two is a gnome, three to four is Terra. All right? Okay. It's a three. <laughs> three. No, now you look like an enemy, man. I know. All know. right, but you can say something if you want to. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Not a great thing to say. Uh, yes. I like it. I like it. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to say, uh, I, I don't know who you are, but I'm trying, really am trying to help. These gnomes, they <laughs> do not give up. They're not really persuadable. There's no other way out of this other than to escape. And I was trying to help by knocking them out to escape. However, my rapier <laughs> has another idea and I swing <laughs> All right, so the cat person swings at Tara. Uh, oh, goodness. Uh, I'm trying to help you. Does, does a 25 hit? It does. <laughs> it would, yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. What's the damage? This is brutal. Uh, the damage. I deserve partial cover. <laughs> I am holding a gnome. Yeah, look, <laughs> luckily I rolled a one, so it's only six damage. All right. Okay. Six points of damage as the cat person apologetically hits you with a sword. Um, yeah, I'm just saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is not my idea. <laughs> uh, and then can I roll a save? Yes, roll your wisdom saving throw. Uh, six. No. No. Oh, actually, it, it, I think it automatically ends at this turn. I don't think I have to save this turn. Uh, the der does it say in the description? Yeah, it that says the, the effect ceases at the end of the wielder's next turn. Huh? Oh, okay, yeah, so it's over after this round. <sighs> Thank goodness. Ooh. That's the end of the cat person's turn, and we're on to Zartok again with the, I think, the third round. Wow, okay. I this don't think I went that turn. Yeah, I don't think Oh, Coral did you not? Oh, I skipped you. Okay, so after Tara, Coral goes. I'm sorry, Coral. Go ahead. Coral's going to take her staff and it actually being skipped won't affect me at all. Okay. Uh, Coral's going to take her staff and strike it on the ground and cast Conjure Animals. Good ability. Okay. And two dire wolves appear around the uh, gnome to the west. Ooh, okay. It is a large beast. Whoa, you can summon two direwolves? Yep. Dang. Girls OP. Terra's no longer stealthy, but there are some wolves. All right, let's see if I can do this. Where are you summoning them? Uh, Just to the, the gnome to the west, just one above, one below. So they're flanking. Two direwolves appear flanking this gnome to the west. You guys can see those tokens okay? Yeah. 
Uh, yes, but if you would like, they are large creatures. If you want oh, to. Oh right. All right, hold on. You would like. Whoa. Ooh. They're dire. Gosh, can you imagine seeing this in in real life? <laughs> okay. There we go. This gnome is in dire straight. <laughs> yes. And did you want them more to nice. the west, or do you want them where they are? Oh, that's fine. Where, where they are. Okay. Yeah. That's All right. Fine. So. Two dire wolves appear on either side of the gnome that's near Zartok that Aster was hitting and then moved away from. So this gnome is now flanked by two dire wolves, and the gnome shouts out, Ah! Mm -hmm. Help! And that is... uh, Is there anything else you want to do in your turn? Uh, No, but I need to uh, roll initiative for them, or would you like them to go on my turn? Let's let's keep it simple. Let's have them go on your turn. Okay. Zartok, what do you want to do? Gonna move. Gonna dash. Don't break invisibility. Okay. What, you don't want to stay with the dire wolves? Crazy. I think he thinks they belong to you. All right, so Zartok runs around the other side of the building. Oh, did he see anybody as he walked this way? Hold on. I want to look down that hallway for longer than no time. Is there nobody coming down the hallway currently? Um, alleyway, let's see. How far can you see? 60 feet. The map's letting me see. Yeah, okay, I can I could, see, I like, couldn't... infinitely. I couldn't see the one that I actually see, so he'll keep going and go around the corner. Oh no, that's not, he doesn't want to go around the corner and then he can't see. Okay, that's where he'll end up and end his turn. Hopefully we all can run soon. And now the priests get to go. So, ooh, this priest that's surrounded by dire wolves is terrified, with good reason. This gnome to the west casts a spell and little white lights, spectral lights, start dancing around it. Dancing around this gnome. And that's his turn. <laughs> He's just going to stand there and uh, that's and defend himself. And these little lights are dancing around him. And the other gnome, the one that's being grappled by Terra. So he's going to try to cast a spell again. Yep, let's, uh, let's try again. So Terra, he's going to try to cast a spell again. It's a very simple spell. Go ahead and make an athletics check so that he can try to get off a spell while you're covering his mouth. Uh, 26. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's he's unable to get it. He rolled really well, but not that well. So that's all he's able to do this round. He's not able to get off these spells with verbal components. Okay, but I, you're going to use my reaction to hit him now. He didn't try to get away. You said you, if you tried to get away, you would oh, do okay. that. I mean. He hasn't tried to move. All he's doing to do is get a spell off. Did you mean to say something else? I mean, he's, like, twisting, right? He's just trying to get his mouth free. He's not trying to escape. That does the opposite of what I wanted him to do. <laughs> okay. All right. I thought you meant if he tried to move away and escape your grapple. No, escaping right. my, my hand to uh, try and cast okay. a spell definitely counts. All right. All right. Go ahead. It's a dagger. So do I add dex instead of strength, or is it either? You can use either one. It's a okay. finesse weapon, which means you can choose. We shall use strength. Oh my god, they're pretty good. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. I gotta do math. Um, I can't use my regular stuff. Okay, so it's plus five. That's a 24, and the other one is a 21. Those are both hits. I think you're hitting it, him with the pommel of the dagger, like in the temple or something. That's how I picture it. Okay. Chris is making throat slashing. No, stabbing. <laughs> I can <couldn't> tell. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not better. <laughs> this is non-lethal. Non-lethal. Okay. Now I'm trying to figure out what the... There's no damage bonus. It's just my uh, proficiency bonus, which is... You can add your... Uh, if you're using it as a finesse weapon, you can add your dexterity as the damage bonus, I think. Definitely not. You should just throw a dagger equipment onto your character and just... Yeah, I was going to do that, but so I didn't have time. <laughs> this is a five and this is a nine, so that's 14 damage. So Terra strikes the gnome for 14 points of non-lethal damage. Aster, it's your turn. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. One other thing happens. Oh, no. More One other thing happens. You hear the pitter-patter of another gnome running up from the south. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so now it's Aster's turn. What do you want to do? Okay. I saw him yell all this stuff out, our cat friend, but then he stabbed Terra. Mm Mm-hmm. So that doesn't Apologizing sit. profusely. That doesn't sit well with me, but I have a passive 20 insight, so can I assume that I can tell he's not lying? Or does he need to roll like a persuasion check? I'll just let you decide based on the role playing what you think is going on, because I'm not sure how to handle that mechanically. <laughs> what does Aster think is happening? 
Well, he's apologizing profusely while acting weirdly, and it looks like he's reluctantly hit Terra. Yes, so I'm going to say that with a passive 20 insight, I can discern that it's not a lie based on the conversation he just spoke out. So instead, I'm going to assume he's an ally and is going to handle Terra, and then I'm going to snap my fingers and go, why did I run here? (laughs) And then I'll walk in this direction, but stop right there. I just want to get into range and I will cast Dissonant Whispers at second level on the gnome with the dire Okay. It's a wisdom saving throw? Yes, I'm going to go you stinky poopy head and then cast my spell. Burn. Alright, they rolled a 17 for their saving throw. Oh man. He makes it. Half damage? Um, yes, it's half. So it's only six damage. All right, six damage. Then... And he has to make a concentration check because the spell that he has up, um, nice. he makes it. <laughs> oh. All right, so he makes his concentration check, and that brings us to Terra. Terra, what is your actual turn now. What do you want to do? Wait, wait, I have a bonus, right? Oh, sure. You want to take a bonus action too? Yes, I'm going to bonus. No, I think Terra's got it under control. I'm going to save him. I'm not going to do anything. Tara, it's your turn. Okay. I am going to uh, release this. Well, maybe I should keep him grappled. I'm going to keep him grappled and attack with the dagger again. Okay. I like that the grapple keeps him from, like, you know, passing spells. That is cool. If you're focusing on attacking him now, I'm not going to make them do that check anymore. When you were just focusing on holding him, I was going to say that that's fine. You can you can just keep basically keep his mouth covered. But if you're going to start switching to attacking... I'm going to start letting him cast spells. Okay, that's fair. 18 to attack and then a 19 to attack? Those are both hits. Okay. Okay, so I don't know if this is right, but D&D Beyond says I have plus six to the damage of the dagger. It's probably using your strength bonus. Yeah, Yeah, okay. Sweet. It's a 10 and then an 8. So 18 damage. 10 and 18 the, points of damage? Yeah, with a dagger. Seems insane. I don't know. But okay. Okay, so you just, you're pummeling this this gnome on the head. Yeah. Ow! 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 I said shh. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tara's turn. Coral, what do you want to do? I'm going to start with the wolves. All right. Well, the wolves start affected in, in the affected area by this spell. Okay. They started their turn there. They must make wisdom saving throws. Oh, wolves are notoriously wise. Of course, yes. Well, uh, that was a two and a four. So All right, those are both fails. Yeah. All right, so they each take. Uh, are they good or neutral? Unaligned. Okay, twelve points of damage each. Okay. Uh, then they're both going to attack. Okay. And they have advantage because of pack tactics. All right, so these lights circling this gnome flare up and strike the wolves with uh, radiant damage and then they attack the gnome. First one's 22 to hit and 11 damage. Okay, that priest goes down. Cool. Yeah. And I assume that was lethal damage. I mean... Actually, 11 just takes it to zero. Exactly to zero. I'm gonna... I'm going to say Coral's intent was to not kill, okay. just to take down. Either way, Eleven takes him exactly to zero, so I'm going to say that he is just unconscious. What else do they want to do? Uh, they're going to uh, move. Uh, actually, Coral's going to step forward, realize that there is a guy coming from down there because she heard the footsteps but couldn't see him yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are going to... Show me where you want them and I'll move them. I'm deciding. And I'll check the distance. Hey, what's their movement speed? 40? 50 feet. Yeah. 50. Yeah, I'm not worried about them. They can move pretty far. Do you want them to attack that that gnome to the I south? I would like the one that's already done its action just to be like in. I don't, I don't know that I have a way to ping you. Uh, Like just south of Coral. A couple squares down further. That's perfect. And the other one can double move and get to the gnome to the south. Yep. Okay. But All can't right, so attack. One, yeah, one wolf moves a bit south of Coral between these buildings toward the approaching gnome, and the other wolf takes the dash action and runs all the way up to this gnome coming up from the south who squeals in terror. Mm-hmm. And 
that was Coral's turn, unless there's anything else you want to do. Sorry, Coral is going to take her turn now. Okay. Uh, 30 feet. I'm too far away. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to move down there, which should put me in range. Yep. Uh, 30 feet exactly. She's going to conjure a little ball of flame and throw it at this priest. Okay, make an attack roll. That's a 22 to hit. That is a hit. And that is 10 damage. Ouch. All right. That is not non-lethal. That is... Nope, that's fully lethal. Full radiant damage. Okay. Okay. Is it sacred flame or produced flame? Uh, that was produced flame. It is just regular okay, so fire. Okay, fire damage. Yep. Okay. Coral does some damage on her turn, and now it is Cat Person's turn. Okay. So Cat Person is looking embarrassed and <laughs> uh, also slightly nervous as uh, they notice these huge wolves running down the alleyways, but luckily taking a diversion not towards them. So yeah, I, I think Cat Person is a bit flustered and is just going to try and uh, knock out the gnome that they're next to, still. All right. Roll a one, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> please roll a one. It would be so much fun. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah fun for you. <laughs> <laughs> so... I feel like I should turn my camera to show you this. <gasps> are you it. serious? No, you did not. You show it to us. You did not. Do you want to see it? Oh. <laughs> yes. I do want to yes, see it. Yes, we do want to see it. I hope you're punking us. The 20. <sighs> oh, my God. It's the... I don't know if you can see this. I can't. You got to get no, close. I can't see it. Just lift it right up there. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Yes. All right. Oh, <laughs> my is so, having so way so too much silly. fun. I need to change dice. Yeah. You might need to burn that one. Oh, glorious day. All right. <laughs> no. Okay. Roll a D10. I'm gonna roll a D10. It's going to be fine. Does it do something when you roll a 20? Uh, like this is potentially, a, this is a... it has a cool effect when he rolls a crit. Yes. Okay. Okay. I was, I was like, miracle of miracles. I rolled a ten. Nice. All right, a ten. It means I can act and move normally. Yes, the creature can act and move normally. So you act normally. <laughs> so you, you've done your attack. Do you want to do anything else? Uh, well, I would like to. Oh, so I attacked and uh, missed. I assume. Um, right, and your sword lit up, but. It has no effect. I didn't do anything this time. Uh, do I want to do anything else? Um, I guess I just want to say I, I really am trying to help these gnomes. They're, <laughs> they're, 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 they're much fiddlier and awkward <laughs> than I was expecting. Yeah, may, maybe I'll just leave you to it next time. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ben. All right, so that is Zartok's turn. What do you want to do, Zartok? <laughs> Does he not have, like, know. advantage on someone who's grappled? No. Okay, this is going really well. I think I would get sneak attack, but I don't think I get advantage, right? All right, Zartok dash down there. And okay. And that's it. All right, Zartok's <laughs> keeping that invisibility on. All right, the priest in front of Terra is going to cast a hold person spell. So I want Terra and the cat person to make wisdom saving throws. All right, my specialty. <laughs> yeah, I'm changing dice. Yeah, good idea. All right, got 20. And 20? Yeah, which is uh, plus one. Yeah, 21, good. All right, wow. And what about the cat person? I got a nine. Ugh. I'm afraid you are held. Oh, rough. But you know, it's Not actually so just bad. as well because you're, you'd be confused through the end of this next round, so at least, you know, you won't your confusion won't be hurting anyone this next round. Oh, am I still confused? Like, even though... You, remember, it goes through the end of your next round, right? Mm. Even though I rolled the 9 or 10 to make, act normally. Yeah, so, okay, so that see. means for that round, for that first round, you're acting normally, and then for the subsequent round... I can't do anything anyway. <laughs> yeah, so that's his action. The other priest is unconscious, and then there's a priest who's confronted by a giant wolf. What should he do with his turn? What can he do to defend himself? <laughs> he doesn't know that it's summoned, so he's not going to try to unsummon it. I guess he'll do the same thing the other gnome did. That's a really good spell. So he casts a spell, and these glowing lights appear around him, encircling him, and that's his action for the round. 
Aster, what do you want to do? Well, Cora looks dashing with her wolves. I think she's got that one, so I'm going to move over to where Tara is. It looks like you'll have to dash to get in range. Well, I have 40 feet of movement. Oh, mobility gives you an extra 10 feet? Okay, yeah, you can get in range. So, I'm going to attempt to hit him with my sword. Okay. And whip. Oh, that one was going to hit. 11 plus 8, 19. That's a hit. I will use sneak attack and... What's your minimum damage? Oh, the minimum damage is 5. Okay, you better go ahead and roll then. Okay. That's a lie, because I have a d6 also. So of sneak attack. So your minimum damage is 6? 6. All right, are you doing non-lethal damage? Yes. That gnome goes down. Oh, okay. And that means that you are released, cat person. Bizarre. <laughs> oh. uh, Aster, anything else you want to do? Uh, um, I just ran all the way there. So no, that's <laughs> my turn. So Aster runs up, conks this gnome on the head. It collapses to the ground and the cat person is released. They finally went asleep. Tara, what do you want to do? Okay, um, Tara has no idea someone else is coming. As far as I know. Um, she's just kind of looking around and uh, drops the gnome body. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, and it's the cat and's like, who are you? <laughs> All right. So there's not much time for a conversation during the six seconds of, of a combat round. Yeah. So we will move on to Coral. What do you want to do? My second wolf is going to run down there to join the first. Your second wolf moves down to get next to this gnome. Your first one has to make a wisdom saving throw. Do they both or just because the one started? Just the first one because it started adjacent. Nine. All right. So it takes 11 points of radiant damage. Okay. And then they're both going to attack. Uh, that's a natural 20. Oh, no. Uh, 17 damage. Oof. Okay. And the second one's a 22. That's a hit. And that is 12 damage. That gnome is unconscious and dying. <laughs> okay. We will all uh, rush back up here. And seeing that the other one is down, we'll wait to see what we're doing next. All right. So, Coral, after your turn and before the cat person goes, another gnome appears and sticks her head around that corner to the south. And she looks around at this gnome that you've knocked unconscious She's wearing overalls or coveralls, just smeared with soot, and she's carrying a hammer in one hand, and she says, what are you doing? What do you think is going, what, what is happening here? You're, you're, you're gonna get yourselves killed? What are you, what is happening? And the figure looks, oh, wait, you know, I did it again. I did it again. I opened it in the in the wrong computer thinking, <laughs> I'll be ready. I'll have this file ready to show them. And it won't take long because I'll have it all set up, ready to go. And I can just share it with Zoom. And then I realized, oh, no, I opened it on the wrong computer because I have two computers. So now I have to switch over to the other computer and open the image over there. And eventually, I'll talk long enough that I will have gotten it open. <laughs> And have it ready to show you. And that is going to occur now. <laughs> ben, Ben, what is your handle on Discord? Uh, Bing Bang. Bing Bang. I knew it! You're the, <laughs> you're the gangster who helped me with my song. I absolutely yeah. am. That's right. <laughs> exactly. 
That's right. We have Ben to thank for the wonder- wonderful lyrics to Astor's song from episode 100. You beastly men. Thank you so much for oh, that. Oh, well, that's very kind. It. I've never been called okay. gangster before, so I'm, uh, you know, that's... Uh, <laughs> That's the Aster County <laughs> Flair. <laughs> um, so. No, that was a lot of fun. Right. I'm, I'm glad I could help. You did an awesome job. And great song. Thank you. I got to get out an antacid because that's how this combat's going. <laughs> <laughs>